Hi everyone, welcome to another video of mine. This one is a pretty much a little guide about how to make some platinum because I thought why not do it? I've actually became experienced enough with the game that in my personal opinion, you of course free to think wrong, uh, like I'm wrong, um, that I have actually gotten good enough at like trading and everything to finally make a video on how to make platinum because before I was kind of just fumbling about and was always kind of cautious like, eh, should I make it? Should I be not? Should I? I don't know. I don't know if I really should. Would I mislead people? But now I'm confident enough that I can actually make a video on how to get platinum. Okay, so first off, the first way is really beginner, in other words, newbie friendly. It involves nothing pretty much but Earth. Well, usually Earth anyway. Okay, so start, start off, I'm going to show you basically how to do an um, excavation mission. So, to unlock this, you just fight your way through Earth, which is pretty simple to do. I mean, unlocking Cetus and Plains Island is really easy. You can basically just go, fly there, land at the city, go out of the city into the free roam, run back in, and it counts both nodes being complete. So, anyway, on to Everest we go, which is pretty easy to get to. Oh, keep in mind, by the way, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. Earth has a day and night cycle, so you can have lo lovely um, sun shiny days, and, um, nice, cool, well, I guess it would probably be breezy nights. And currently, it is day. It does, uh, change what kind of, um... Oh, damn, I didn't get those little critters. I was hoping for some loot for them. It does doesn't it does change what kind of um uh thresh cones and stuff will pop up when you uh, spawn them, which is used to uh well they're used to make this certain substance that you can bless the shrine that appears in Earth and then you can um get warframes to spawn once you kill those warframes, then you can get certain mods, and uh, this is what I mean, like this little sunlight thresh cone. Moonlight thresh cones will spawn in the night, sunlight thresh cones will spawn in the day, and a bunch of other flowers. You can uh, look up that stuff with the wiki. Or I might even make a video on um Picking flowers in Warframe and how to do the Silver Grove stuff. Anyway, so on to the actual mission we go. When you start off, you will find this new type of Grenier, which kind of looks kind of weird because he's uh, got like a white suit, I guess. And also, he drops these things. You want to pick them up. They're the power cells that you use to power the excavator. So then, once you have a power cell, you run over to the uh, little orange indicator on your map. Killing any Grenier you find that you come across along the way. Keep in mind though, also, even if you're like me and generally like leaving the wildlife of Earth alone and a kind of, um, well, a nice person when it comes to not killing Kubrows, you may need to kill them in this mission because they will try and eat the excavator. Yes, you heard me right. Kubrows love the taste of metal in the morning. I'm not sure why. Okay, so here what I'm doing is uh, leaving the excavator slightly unattended because the Grenier will try and run over to shoot it. Uh, butchers are a high priority here because even though they can't damage you, the excavator is an object that will stay still, and as you can see right there, it's kind of hard to see because of how dark it is from this uh, overhang here. But the butcher was trying to chop the excavator to pieces. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, so also on the side there, hold on and let me uh, just pause the game. So when you're looking over here, you can see a few things. There was the excavator health, which is displayed in red, that will regenerate if the excavator has power, by the way. Or I'm pretty sure you can actually heal it as Trinity. I'm not entirely sure, or like other... Use other things that increase its health. I could potentially test with rejuvenation, but that's kind of harder to tell than if I was using Trinity, Oberon, or Warframe that can actually heal. Next up, you have the M um, shields, not energy. Shield that displays a blue bar and will recharge to 500 immediately the second you stick in a power cell. Then, of course, there was the excavation time there. You have the amount of power you put in and the extra amount of excavation time. Each power cell gives you 20% power. And, um,. Actually, yeah, 20 percent of power, and uh, you each um, excavate. I mean, 20 units of power. That's what I'm trying to say. And each unit equals one second. So the excavator's time, I'm pretty sure, is around like a, a um a minute and a half, and you have to like shove that many power cells in there to get it fully powered. Also, keep in mind that you can shove in more power cells than you than you need to keep the excavator alive. What I mean by this is that, I'll just prove it to you. Okay, so now, right now the excavator says it's full. But since the Grenier have damaged it and taken it down to around like 300 th um, uh, shields now, I can go and shove in, in another the excavator cell to increase the amount of shields that um, it has and basically buff it up and uh, stop it from dying. This is an excellent tactic if you're in a group or not. It really doesn't matter because so many of these little power cells that spawn, uh, spawn that you can just pretty much waste them like this. Well, not really waste them, you're keeping the excavator alive, so you are doing something with them. You are doing something very worthwhile, in fact. Also, keep in mind that this mission gets a lot easier. 
even if you are two complete total noobs, like if you are both level zero Excaliburs running into this mission, which I don't recommend doing, I recommend to at least getting to level uh, six or ten before you actually do this, because there's quite a lot of enemies that spawn, otherwise you just be down heaps. And uh, even if you're doing that, it makes it much easier. It especially helps if a, you're nice enough to find in a public match a veteran player of the game, which has like heaps and heaps of really good weapons, like uh, the Ignis, for example, which is great at clearing all this Grinia. But if you're just doing this solo by yourself, you just want to go by yourself, or you're playing a public match and no one seems to want to go drilling on Earth, then, in my opinion, just go for about uh, six excavators. That'll give you a... Uh, uh, otherwise the enemies start getting very, very tough after that. Or perhaps you could try and go to 10, but after 10 they start going past level 20 and then they start doing a lot of damage. The frontline lancers will actually upgrade to elite frontline lancers and get better guns. And they get much more armor and generally destroy your excavator much, much quicker. And eventually you start basically needing warframes like frost, place a um, basically a frost bubble, like a little snow globe, around the excavator. Because you don't have that, even if you can survive, the excavator won't and you have to constantly babysit it. Another thing that's going to be really annoying that can happen in an excavation mission a lot is that you go and leave the excavator alone because no enemies are spawning and try and find a power cell. Then as you're running away to try and find a power cell, all the enemies will spawn at once right next to your excavator and blow it up before you can do anything. It's quite annoying when that happens. To alleviate this, that's why I also recommend playing with other people because they will help you and they will make sure that the excavator doesn't get blown up. This mission here is also a semi-decent way of getting credits. I say semi-decent because if you really, really want credits, I suggest doing a lot of the alerts that pop up because they can give like around 5,000 credits per single alert instead of the measly amount, I, kind of measly amount I got here. And then also, they can also give you, um, well, not, not, not also, but they can also give you endo. And then if you also really want credits, like I said in my previous video, just kill the sergeant on Phobos. He's an extremely weak corpus. Okay, so... Now that you've got done the excavation mission, I just completed that quickly so I can get on to the next part of this video. Let's say you got a relic. Let's say you got a few lith relics here. Just ignore these really... Well, uh, don't, I'll explain these really, really bright glowing one in a minute. So let's say you got... Uh, what's one of them that actually shows up a lot? Yeah, this lith T2 relic. So it will display all the things you can get in it. Which is a form blueprint, Valkyrie prime, prime, yada, yada, yada. Basically, brown means... or uh, Brown or bronze means that it's common. It will show up the most. Silver so means uncommon, and gold means the rarest. So also, um, by the way, by doing that, um, oh wait, no, never mind, the, the, that doesn't happen yet. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you go and uh, choose one of these relics for a uh, relic mission that you would do. I'll just get over to the navigation console and actually show you uh, one of the main mechanics of relic missions. So you go over here, select this, and you want to go and select a lift relic, because that is the no generally the type of relic, they like the... Um, uh, first relics you generally find, they, they are the um, lowest tier, so it doesn't, doesn't necessarily always mean they have really crappy stuff in them, they just they have the easiest missions associated with them, which you want because you're a new player. Trust me, you don't want to start going into Neo immediately because you can see the enemies are 25 to 27, and especially 30 to 40, and in that case they will just, well, kill you immediately. So, this is actually a perfect mission to show you because it's capture. Capture is really quick and is great for running relics. If you uh, keep in mind though that if you're a new player, you may find veterans if you select public just breezing past you continuously and uh, killing all the enemies without really giving you a chance to do anything. In that case, you may want to try and leave the group or just find a certain uh, just team up with one or two other players who are also kind of new to the game. So you can take it a little slower so you're not just continuously overwhelmed by flashing lights and all the green air screaming and dying. Okay, so since this is an average capture mission, you've probably done one or two of these by now if you're watching this video and want to know how to farm relics. They're pretty easy. You just go find a dude, basically shoot him or chop him up until he falls to the floor, and then um, suck him into some kind of weird pocket dimension, I guess. It's kind of hard to explain. You kind of just you turn him into this weird glowing yellow energy, and he just flies into your hand, disappears. Uh, Pokeballs may be a good way to explain that. Yeah, this is a good way. Okay, so... While, of course, you are traveling to your capture target, in any um, relic mission, void fissures will be opening. Basically, the void fissure is a tear in space that uh, opens itself up to the void and will start releasing Oricon enemies and giving all the enemies in the level and hits a gold sheen, thereby corrupting them. Weirdly enough, even if the enemies aren't corrupted yet, they will not fight the uh, uh, Oricon enemy, like the corrupted enemies that will spawn out. Like, basically, this little thing is this screen here. Even if he didn't have the golden sheen, and he wasn't corrupted, 
he still for some reason wouldn't be fighting this corrupted Moa and this corrupted Butcher here, even though he is, uh, will probably be told by the Queen, Greener Queens and stuff to go and kill those things as his duty. It's really weird. I don't get it. They all go for you for some weird reason. It's like some mutual pact no one even talked about. Okay, so here's the capture target. I just need to capture him. Should be pretty easy. He's barely even running away. I'm just firing my Hema continuously into his back and legs and he's just falling over. Oh yeah, keep in mind one thing. When capturing the target, you want to wait for maybe an opportune moment. By that I mean, uh, chop the enemies in the area. Or like, slap, well do whatever to them. Like basically do that, kill them. Because they will still keep attacking you without mercy while you are trying to capture him. Also another thing to keep in mind is that um, occasionally ancients will spawn. They're basically like a Cthulhu looking infested. And they will have a healing pulse. The healing pulse can be, there's, like, there's one. The healing pulse can be especially annoying because... They, for some reason, as I said before, are counted as allied with the um, capture targets you are trying to um, you're trying to capture. So if they run over to him, they will actually be able to heal him off the floor and like get him back. They'll be able to help him back up, and he can keep running on like the tiny slithered health. And at that point, you have to hit him again. So yeah, as you can see, even though I'm quite high level, the enemies here actually kind of oh, yeah, they are intense. They killed me. They straight up just killed me. Oh, that's why they killed me. This damn Rampart over here. Okay, so as I explained in my previous video, Ramparts currently are a little bit bugged. So you see me now aiming normally. I'm pretty accurate and fluid with my Hema here. I even got the uh, headshot mission there. But if I hop into this uh, Rampart, suddenly it moves like a snail. I've already submitted a bug report, so hopefully the uh, game designers um, fix this soon. But currently what I recommend doing is so they can't use it against you, cut it to bits. Even if your weapon doesn't do that much damage, all you need to do is swing generally fast like this and just cut the damn rampart to bits so they can't use it against you again. Because believe me, you don't want to be just sitting there and then someone randomly runs up to it like this. He said in this case they're actually failing to even use the rampart. I guess they forgot to read the instruction manual or some crap. And then they will just kill you. Oh yeah, uh, what happened there? All this time, I've been collecting void traces. There are these little glowing orbs on the floor. I might actually do a second one of these missions to show you exactly what they look like. But, yeah, you're generally meant to be collecting 10 Void Traces in this mission. And then once that's finished, it will power up a certain weapon, making it glowing gold. If it's one of your, uh, if it's a weapon that can shoot, for example, like this Sycharis, like in other words, your secondary or primary. If for the time uh, displayed in the top right corner of the screen, right there, this little blue thing they will display. The weapon will have unlimited ammo, which can get utterly bonkers if you have a weapon, for example, like the Quin Quin Gricardas which are twin submachine guns that you hold in each hand as a secondary that you can then fire with infinite bullets for sometimes up to nearly a minute if you're doing a high level mission which is absolute mad mad fun it is so so fun just holding down the trigger not giving a crap about ammo and just spraying bullets all over the level think in mind this also works for other weapons that take a really long time to spool up like the Gorgon the Gorgon is in a lot of players opinions a really crap weapon but I love it just because of the sound it makes. Yes, I love it just for the sound. But the Gorgon can actually be quite a fun weapon because of its spool up time. Basically think of it as a minigun or chain gun. As you keep firing it, it gets faster and faster and faster. And it will stay at its fastest speed if you have the infinite ammo buff from the relics. So you can potentially get like the almost minute long infinite ammo buff and just scream like a madman or giggle with glee, whatever you want to do, while just holding down the trigger and murdering everything in sight continuously and like not even bothering to like stop holding down the trigger. You can perform jumps while holding the trigger. The only thing you can't do is sprint while doing that because that uh, stops you firing. Yeah, so uh, when the uh, have the re reactants and have completed the mission, you can pretty much bypass the enemies if you want and you don't want to gain the experience or anything like that. You can just, just run all the way to the end. And at this point, it will, if you're alone, just give you a random prime item from the list. For example, here I got the Valkyrie Prime Blueprint. But if you're with other people, a selection will appear and you'll be able to choose what prime um, things you want. Now, there are two strategies for going and uh, trying to um, getting platinum with all this. The first strategy is just choose the items based on rarity. If it's a gold, you always pick it. If it's silver, you always pick it. If it's nothing but bronze, you just try and go for the gold and silver. In other words, common and, uh, I mean, uncommon and rare. And never bother about the common items because the items, the higher the um, value the item is, 
the more docket it trades for, and docket of the currency used by Barakatia, the void traders, is actually currently here. And even if you can't access him, let, let's say you're a new player, and you're on the star chart, and he spawns somewhere like Pluto, which is ages away and really high level, and you can't get to here, other players will still want to buy the prime items of you, in a, which they will call prime junk, because they will, um... Yeah, because they will, um, want, uh... A high, an item that's worth a high amount of ducats or ducats to trade for Barakatia for his stuff. So, when just starting off, I recommend just trying to go for the like rarest stuff you can. And then later on, you can actually try and start going for prime sets. And then going for the certain relics that will um, generally give you all the prime sets. For example, here I have a little bit of Banshee here. I've already got the um, Neuroptics and the um, Blueprint, but I need the other parts. And the main reason why you want to go for all the other parts is because you can generally sell all the stuff for more if you want a full set. Also, generally speaking, currently how the market is working, there are two deals you can go for. You can either just say you're selling Prime Junk, and in that case, you can, if you're really desperate, you can list each Prime item for one Platinum piece. Or generally, people are buying it for two Platinum piece. Or if generally, if you're on trade, trade Chat, just try and find um, offers where people are saying like WTB, which stands for Willing to Buy or Want to Buy. And they're saying they want to offer you more than two platinum per um, prime item. I once found a very, very good deal where someone was offering 15 platinum for prime items. That's a, that's like a steal. You should definitely go for that. That's a good, good price. Another deal people are also offering is, for example, a certain amount of rare things. So they want to buy five rare things off you for 50 platinum. There's basically 10 platinum each for each little part. In my opinion, that is worth it. Okay, so I'll just quickly go into another capture mission on Mars. So you can actually see what the void traces look like. Uh, this one's good. Oh yeah, also keep in mind that you've been playing Warframe for ages and that, like I've been playing Warframe for ages and you were playing it for example when uh, tower keys were still around which is like the old void and have came back. All your tower keys will now be transferred, um, transformed into void relics and they will usually be generally very, very valuable, so don't go really, really using them without um, upgrading, which I explained very soon as well. Because if you do that, then generally uh, you could be potentially even selling the Void Relics for a decent amount of Platinum because they are rare. That is gen um, generally the term for a Void Relic not being available is Vaulted, if you wanted to know. Okay, so I just quickly killed my way through. Hey, that, that, that's the main thing. That's what you're looking for. That's right there. That is what the reactant looks like. Uh, you don't have to mark it with the um, waypoint key. In this case, I'm playing PC. It's G. You press it and you make waypoint. Press it again. You move the waypoint. You press it again when you're on the waypoint and you remove the actual waypoint. You don't have to do that because these things will all automatically have waypoints. The only thing you have to keep in mind when doing this mission is that sometimes someone will spawn in very late or towards the very end of the mission, and in that case, it is generally um, it, the general like thing you want to do to be courteous to them is wait for them to go get all their void traces or even help them get all their void traces because this will also benefit you because if you don't let them get all their void traces and finish the mission you won't have their available prime thing as a selection and they could potentially get really lucky and get you for example the zephyr prime systems which is a rare in other words gold drop which you would want a lot okay so back over here the void relics i'm now going to explain how you can upgrade the void relics so go into a relic select it and you will notice that you have a certain amount of these void traces from the mission you did. It will actually display, once you've collected 10 of those little glowing yellow things, which I forget what they're actually called, I don't know, void fissure traces or something, maybe something different. Once you have um, 10 of them, oh, I can't actually display it here because I quit the mission, but yeah, if I could display last mission results here, and I just actually um, finished that mission instead of aborted it, then it would tell me right here how many um, void uh, traces I got from the mission. So once you have the Void Traces, you can power up a Relic with that. There are four um, states of being powered up. It's intact, which basically means it's um, just normal. You've done nothing to it. Exceptional, which means you've put 25 in. Flawless and in Radiant. Keep in mind that if you're really, really going for an item, you want to do nothing with Radiant. Don't even bother about Flawless and Exceptional, because as you can see here, by the way this bar moves, if you want the rarest item, the only way it even moved to about half full, or well not even that, which means it's even like half a chance to get it, is if you do completely radiant, and otherwise don't bother with it. Also keep in mind that as if you are a new player, you will not have this many void traces you can bank up. What I mean by this is that 
because I am Master Rank 18, a really, really high Master Rank, by the way, like, I'm close to, well, kind of close to, like, the last one, which is, like, Rank 24 currently, or 23 or something, or 22, I'm not really that sure. I have a thousand Void Traces available. If you are lower rank, for example, Master Rank 5, you may only have 500 or a little less, like 300. And in that case, keep an eye on this, because if you didn't know how, like, upgraded Void Relics work, you could potentially be running missions, getting all this reactant, and if you reach the maximum cap, you will not be able to get any more. It basically, the game just deletes it, so keep that in mind. Okay, so that is pretty much how to, uh, get Platinum by, um by doing uh, void missions. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to get platinum by fishing. And it is going to be in the, um, like one single video that I'm going to be doing here. I'm not really going to be putting any cuts in it. And the video will be quite long because of this. So, if you only wanted to know about void relics and traces, you can pretty much stop watching the video right now. I won't blame you. Also keep in mind that, um, basically what I said before, this is actually an excellent stopping point if you wanted to pause and go have lunch or something else, or you need to go out to school, whatever. Okay, so off we go to Cetus. And the thing you want to be trying to do, and this is actually quite a long process, by the way, to, um, get your, um, either get the Ostron standing much, much higher, or get, um a fish that players actually want to buy. Okay, so to start off, you go to Fisher Highlock, this lady here, browse her wares, and you want to get this stuff, the Luminous Dye Blueprint, which takes a bunch of resources you get on the Plains Idol and a bunch of other stuff, and of course this, the Lanzo Fishing Spear. You'll be able to get this even if you're basically, I think, uh, just rank 1 with Cetus, which is pretty easy to get. So, once you have this, you go out into the Plains Idol and just go to any single fishing spot you can find, start fishing there, um, and then make sure to chuck in the stuff that makes flesh glow, which I will show you and explain in greater detail very soon. And then once you finish with that, you come back to Fisher Highlock with the fish you have collected, and then you start selecting the fish. For example, these uh, Gooplas here, I'll just select five of them to show you. And it will show you then how much standing you get. In this case, five of them will give me 250 standing if I give them to her. Which is uh, actually not that that much compared to some of the other fish you can give her. And, um... Yeah, and also this will show you a daily standing. Daily standing, like I explained before, it's a lot like with Void Traces. The higher Mastery rank you are, the more daily standing you can get. Oh, and I'm pretty sure I actually have this because I'm Mastery rank 19 and not 18. I think I made a mistake there. So anyway, I will give her this stuff. And she will say thank you or something. Anyway, so... After you have gone fishing and ranked up with Fisher High Luck, you will then want to get, uh, like, the main way you're going to start actually making either getting getting a lot of reputation or, um, uh, getting fish people actually want to buy is this, the Twilight Bait. So, you buy it for 200 reputation and then you get, you get some Nissopod, which is a pain in the ass to get, Mapraco, which spawns everywhere, fish, with fish oil, and fish meat, which you get by just, uh, butchering fish, which I'll show you how to do right now. So, you go into fishing services again, and then you select the fish. In this case, I will just select something I really don't care about, like a single small goopla. Or medium, actually. And then you just click cut bait, and it will show you how much um, stuff you get off it. So keep in mind, this is not generally enough fish to uh, make that uh, twilight bait. You will need a bit more. So you press OK, and it'll make a nice sound, and then you will get the resources. Okay, now I'm just going to click on the fast travel thing and go to Konzu because that's a very good way to get right to the door to see this because there is Konzu, here's the door. And this leads right out into the plains of Eidolon, or Eidolon, however you pronounce it. Just waiting for the gate to open. This is generally how long it takes to load, maybe you take even longer if your internet connection is kind of poor or your computer is a bit of potato and a bit slow. Okay, so once you're out there, you want to equip your Arcwing launcher, and thanks to a new update, it's infinite. And also deploys immediately, so you don't have to put down beacons and no one else can actually steal it off you like what happened before, so yay. Okay, now that, um... Now that, uh, we're out here, what you want to do at first is just go to an average lake like this, and then fish. 
But I'm going. But just, let's say you've done that all, and we can just basically skip that step because uh, fishing fish is a pretty easy process. I don't really need to explain how that works as Vayak yells in the background. And instead, we're just going to go right to here. Now, the type of fish you want to be getting from this is called a Karinka or something like that, and it only spawns at night. If you hold down the map button, that's M for PC, it will display right down here what time of day it is. This is actually great that it's sunset, so if I just wait a little bit longer, it will finally be nighttime, and then it will be, uh, which, is, which means that you actually will not even need the twilight bait, which is awesome. But for now, you may actually need the twilight bait. Also keep in mind that um, if any Grenier spawn around here, like this little bunch did uh, recent, like really recently, right now in fact, they will generally, uh, their patrol, patrol route will eventually get in the way of your fishing. And like a grumpy old man, you don't want that, so go out like a grumpy old man and beat them with your stick till they get off your lawn! Yeah, anyway, so once you're done removing the grenade up from your, so to say, lawn, then go to a fishing spot like so and equip your spear. Keep in mind there are three fishing spears to buy, and if you aren't piercing the hide of the fish that you are currently looking for, then you either need to equip a different spear and buy it, of course, or you will need to use a, I guess, just Volt. Because Volt has an ability where as you walk around like so, he builds up static charge, which can actually be then discharged through the fishing spear to basically create an electric fishing spear. It doesn't do any neat effects, but it kills any fish, basically, in one hit. I've heard if you do sprint like so and run around in the full circle about three times. So that should do it. That is pretty much all you need to do to get enough charge to kill any fish. But some people prefer to just equip the fishing spear because they find that faster. Okay, anyway, so. Now that you actually have a fishing spear out and are ready to fish, you want to chuck in the required bait, the twilight bait, if it's not night time, which it isn't yet, so I'm going to chuck some in by just pressing 2 on the keyboard. I actually don't have this bound to any controller buttons, so... Um, well, I'm not sure what this would be bound to if you were using a PS, um, PS4 or a... Are you kidding me? More Grenier. Or if you were using a, um, a Xbox 360 controller on an Xbox One and you're playing Warframe there. I'm actually amazed I even got a stealth kill on that Grenier. Like, how did he saw me, ran away, and then apparently got a stealth kill, making no sense. Okay, so now that, that thing's in the water, you still can't really see the fish, which is why you want to put this in, because it will make any fish glow bright blue, like, uh, glow bright blue. Like they were irradiated and had just drank the uh, nuclear quantum cola from Fallout 4, or 3, or whatever, whatever the Fallout that appears in. No fish are actually spawning right now, which is par for the course. Sometimes you have to just wait around until the fish spawn. You can, of course, try and go to different locations, like slightly different locations. Like you could, of course, flip over this shark here, and then go up here, and then go to this rock. But generally, just try and be patient when it comes to the fish actually spawning because um... they won't always spawn I and mean, they may take a little while also keep in mind that it may be actually a good idea to get multiple people in your party the more people there are, generally more enemies they spawn and the same deal as the fish but it may be a little bit hard for you to find a um... person who is willing to just come out with you and chill here for a good while a lot of people tend to want to go to the plains for um... action and that means shooting the grenier and stuff yeah, so I am actually going to put a cut in here until some darn fish spawn because you don't need to see me here rambling all day about how the damn fish aren't coming and how the grenier don't get off my lawn. Okay, so I'm back and it's actually taken so long that the bait has ran out, but this is exactly what you're looking for. This. The crustacean that hunts during the twilight hours. So that's the type of fish you want, uh, because you can potentially sell it, and as well as selling it, you can also um, use it to craft the next piece of bait to get the rare fish that we're going to go after uh, um, after this called the Norg, which is the fish that you really want to be able to sell to people, and um, yeah, to be able to sell to people, and then of course um, use it to get Norg brains, which is a thing you need to advance. Um, Seed is standing. 
Also, keep in mind that um, the other type of fish that you want that spawns here is um, a shark, which is a type of basically um, yeah, one of these things here. I forget exactly what you use their bones for, but I know it's something useful. You will want it, trust me. Also, a, uh, the biggest ones look pretty nice in your fit, in your orbiter if you can um, catch them like this one right here and uh, mount them as a trophy. And of course, all fish, keep in mind, can also um, be put in your fish tank. Doesn't matter what type it is. If you are, uh, and you can um, also choose a vignette to be your fish tank. What I mean by that is that there's these little displays you can have inside your orbiter. There's, for example, one for Cephalon Suda, one that looks like a um, basically a, a place where you'd place miniatures, like little war game miniatures. It looks just like Mars. It is really, really lovely and, and um, in my opinion, very calming to actually look at. And then, of course, you can make your middle vignette, which is the name for the uh, little diorama set, to be a fish tank. So you can have even more fish inside your ship. In fact, if you really want, you can make it all Norgs, which would make it look like they're a bunch of angry squidwards constantly looking at you. Yes, that is what actually what a Norg looks like in my opinion. It is Squidward with a really, really red head. Also drawn by some, also, um... Imagine, so imagine, for an Norg, imagine Squidward and he was drawn someone by someone who was drunk, who drew drawn him with basically no body at all, and gave him a gigantic head. And the reason why I say that is because when I catch one soon enough, you will soon see that it does look just pretty much like Squidward nose and everything. Okay, so that's generally, um... That's generally what you need to know about uh, how to catch the fish around this area. Use the twilight bait and that uh, thing to make them glow if it is not currently nighttime. Or if it is nighttime, don't worry about the twilight bait because that twilight basically means nighttime and just put this thing down instead. So, what I'm going to do now here is uh, go to the place where you actually find the norgs. I don't need to put a cut in here because it's actually pretty simple to get there. And I'll show you how. So just get in your arc wing. And fly to the, uh, I'm um, terrible directions. I think that's the east side of the map. You want to go past the, um, Cedars to, um, Gara, t um, Tot Lake, uh, Lake Waypoint. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I'm pronouncing it because it has got a H after the T and the O, which makes it just really, really weird to pronounce. Just don't worry about any grenade bases like this or anything. Even if they see, you can just fly over them. Oh, and um, here is actually the Eidolon, which um, is an excellent point for me to show you that this thing here can also be an excellent way to interrupt your fishing. So generally when it's around, stay clear of it. In this case, don't fish right there. Pretty simple, because this thing, it's kind of like Godzilla. It will just stomp and shoot laser beams at you, and it's really, really deadly. But it's actually kind of, weirdly enough, for being an Eidolon, which is kind of sentient, which is usually a killer monstrosity, this one's actually kind of peaceful, and will generally not actually attack you unless you shoot it. So it makes me wonder why players keep on hunting them. I mean, it gets to the great rewards, but honestly, if they weren't tailed to this thing basically terrorizing the locals and everything, and killing anyone who comes across, I think it's quite peaceful, because I mean, look at this. I'm like the most annoying fly you could be right now. I'm, I'm flying in front of it. I bumped into it, and it still doesn't mind. It's actually just kind of like some kind of dopey, happy elephant. In fact, considering that, it may be actually pretty easy to just avoid it even if it is right near west, next to where you're fishing. Which I find kind of hilarious because if you remember correctly, there was actually tra um, there was, uh, tra uh, trailers for the um, Britannocon, which is like a, uh, a convention for Warframe players. And they were showing off how the Grenier were really, really scared and getting on their transports and trying to flee the planes to Ironlon. Nah, I mean, if the Grenier one's stupid enough not to shoot, I mean, smart enough not to shoot it, that thing would just be like, as I said, a, a dopey happy elephant and wouldn't even bother them. Okay, so now that we're at this lake, you want to hold down the button for the um, bait that you have. So you can select a different bait. You want to select Norg bait, which I'll show you how to create uh, soon enough. Which is the um, pink bait. So you want to throw some of it in the water because you don't want twilight bait. Because basically everything that spawns in here, um, well, it's not really worth it for twilight bait. It's just eels. Lots and lots of eels. Yeah, that's the general thing you find in this area. One other type of fish and an eel. Just so many eels. Funny thing is, eels actually give you a decent amount of reputation. If you give them to a fish of high luck, and don't worry about giving them to her because they are not a rare fish at all. They spawn all the time. Okay, so that's actually what you're looking for, the Norg. Oh! 
Okay, so apparently, as you can see there, I hit it with the spear, but it didn't do enough damage, because that actually reminds me, uh, this is the fishing spear you will need to use for the Norgs, the Piram's fishing spear, because it is the best for piercing a Norg's hide. Also, uh, the eels, they're so weak, any type of fishing spear can basically pierce, the, pierce them, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, damn it, don't tell me the Norg's left. I wanted to catch it. As you can see, they swim really, really far away. It's kind of hard to actually, um, find them, because this glowing bait only, um, makes it glow so much. Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. I, can't, I can't believe I forgot this. To find the Norgs, you actually need to lose up a lot of bait and continuously move around, because what you are looking for for a Norg to actually spawn is a, um... A splash in the water, a continuous splash. I'll just actually get, get in the arc wing so you can see what it looks like. So you just fly around until you find one. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what I was talking about. That right there. Oh, um, these things. Yeah, um, if you are a new player, I actually need to find a different fishing, fishing spot because I don't want to um, spoil how you uh, fight them because you need to use something you only get after the war was in. It's kind of a big reveal. And those things are pretty much invincible if you don't have that one thing. So yeah, if you're a new player, just try and avoid those Vomulus, that's what they're called by the way. And uh, lead them to a Grenier camp, because the Grenier, oddly enough, have a way of dealing with them. And I say lead them to the Grenier camp because you don't want to be fighting them, because unless you lead them to the a certain thing that the Grenier had called an Eidolon lure, which is actually used to trap the big dopey elephant Eidolon thing, you won't actually even be able to kill them. Okay, so here we are at the splashes. Just going to select the uh, right fishing spear, the right bait, and then get fishing. Doesn't really matter where you chuck these, you can chuck them on top of each other. Only thing that does matter is that they uh, land in the water. If you chuck them somewhere where it's not the water, they will, of course, you won't get any fish. Yeah, also, generally keep yourself low enough to the ground. Like, the bait actually will still activate over here, but as you can see before, the fish actually weren't spawning because it's too high up. Fishing can actually be very finicky, which is uh, why one of the things you can do to actually alleviate that is use um, Ivara. I'll link a uh, my tutorial series on how to get her if you want her, but um, one of the abilities she has is where she creates a uh, trip line, or no, 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 like a wire that you can go across by shooting her bow. You can walk across it, and that wire will let you um, fish while on it. But keep in mind that, that what I'm doing right now, I'm actually zooming in constantly every time I go and try and uh, skewer myself a nice tasty fish. You will not be able to use that. You have to pretty much fish using uh, well, pretty, a lot more of your instincts. Like just fish like this. You just throw the thing in and it's a lot less accurate. So it's an upside and a downside because you can use her tripwire thingamajig to... Um, yeah, that's what I meant. Huge, gigantic nose, and when I, I actually put one of these in the fish tank soon, and that's what I meant by it looking a lot like Squidward. Yeah, so as I was saying, so the um, trip Y is pretty much a uh, double-edged sword. So even though I could stay out here for ages and catch a lot more Norgs, you've basically seen how you get a Norg to properly spawn and uh, fish it. Also keep in mind that... Um, Sometimes, if you're just not getting a large Norg or a medium Norg like this one is, just wait around and it will spawn eventually. And also make sure you keep an eye on the splashes. Because, just like in World of Warcraft, where you have to fish inside the splashes to get certain type of fish, you can deplete the splashes. You don't have to necessarily fish inside them, like in World of Warcraft in Warframe's case. You can just fish anywhere and the fish will spawn. Well, anywhere close enough to the ground, of course. But, the splashes will eventually disappear, and when that happens, you have to find a new location for splashes, which is why Norgs can be a bit of a pain to fish for, especially since you will constantly need to find new bait, I mean, make new bait and chuck it in the water because um, of the splashes going away and Norgs being finicky, finicky little fish. Okay, so now I'm pretty much going to head back to see this and showing you why you will actually want to go fishing for Norgs. And if you're wondering how my Arcwing is so fast, I put a uh, boost mod on it and upgraded it a lot, like level 10. That's how I can just zip around the place so fast. And if you're wondering how I'm not crashing into stuff, why I just stay pretty much high up off the ground, I've also gotten very used to it. Like, I've uh, 
spamming like, like around the speeds three months flying with this boost mod, so I really know its speeds. I bet if I upgrade it even more, I'd be um, a complete noob at flying it once again. Okay, so now that we're back in Cedars, time to go with the fast travel and uh, go to Fisher High Luck. And this is why you want to actually go and get Norgs. Well, one of the reasons anyway. I got a medium Norg there, if you remember. So we're just going to select it. Yeah. 650 reputation for one medium Norg instead of 250 for three or uh, four large Gooplas, which are those fish there. So that is why you would um want to get Norgs. Also, Norgs tend to sell for the most when um, selling to other players, but keep in mind, players usually like to buy them in bulk. What I mean by that is uh, try and fish up 10 of the same size Norgs, even if they are small, and uh, try and sell them in either units 8, 10, or bigger amounts. Because of how trading works, generally people won't want to buy just one or two Norgs, because unless they are maybe la really large ones, because they are generally um, not worth it. Okay, so... Um, that's pretty much actually it when it comes to fishing. I may, I may, I may do another part when I get um, better at fishing the other types of fish that aren't just Norgs. But so far, all I've really done is uh, went Norg mad. Went for a lot of Norgs. I haven't went for the other, even harder type of fish to get. And that leaves the last part of the video on how to get Platinum. Which is... Um, basically... Going... Cavet and Kubra hunting and uh, getting imprints. So, first off, just going to go to a random mission on Earth. Going to make sure it isn't a Void Fisher or a Kuba Flood because that is a really late game thing. I don't want to spoil. I'm just going to choose the regular capture mission here. Now, I may have already covered these things and the, the things I'm going to cover in a... Um, previous video of mine, but, uh, yeah, sorry about this, I, I did cover them in a previous video of mine, so, um, basically, I'm going to cover how you do the end result of getting platinum, but for gathering actual, um, Cavett genetic codes in Kubra, uh, eggs from Kubra dens, I'm just going to link my video on how to get a Cavett, because I already covered that already, no use recording this thing twice. Okay, so, when it comes to genetic codes anyway, what you want to do is um, basically get 10 Cavat genetic codes and then go and um, incubate a Cavat. And then depending on how it looks and everything, you can uh, sell the uh, uh, codes for a certain amount of um, platinum. What I mean by that is also like what type of breed it is. So there are some Kuba breeds that are incredibly rare to get. I'm just getting one of the pets out of the incubator to show you right now. This one is called Violet. I'm actually planning to consign her, in other words, give her to the Lotus. Yes, I know it might be a little bit sad in your opinion that I'm just giving away this pet. But I already have the same type of Cabat that Violet here is. And also, as well as that, if you look in my stasis, I already have this many pets. They are all usually, like, pretty much there are different types of pets, except for Custard here. It is a El Helmuth Charger, which is like an infested Kubra. And the reason why it's level 0 and that one is, uh, and then, um, at, um, where is it? Ash is over here, which is another helmless charger, is also, is, um, level 30, is because I kept this one as a baby, because sometimes I like the ambience of just having a baby little infested gribbly walking around the ship. Okay, so, when it comes to Cavats and Kubrows, one of the things you'll be looking for, and I can't show you this, is basically, um, if I, uh, well, I can go into the, uh, genetic tools and show you the imprints. Oh, here it is, Ben Up Browse Genetic Imprints. So, as you can see here, this is one of the first ever Kubras I got, Blizzy. Uh, that's what I named him. And generally, one thing players are always looking for is um, big, bulky ones. So, usually, generally, even bulkier than this. I don't know why. Certain really extravagant fur patterns as a base color, for example, bright orange or bright yellow, or lotus markings on the head, which generally looks the same as you'd find on vandal weapons, right there on the forehead, usually. As for Cavats, what most people want is um, a Smita Cavat, or Smeet Cavat. Which means that this uh, Cavat imprint I he have here, called um, Also Worth It, because I named my first Cavat Totally Worth It, and then I named this one Also Worth It, because it was like the second type, uh, Astra Cavat. Mm, not many people actually generally want this, which is a bit weird, even though it provides some excellent critical bonuses. 
But so does the Smeet Cabot. The main reason people want the Smeet Cabot in France all the time is because they give you extra resources. And then also, they are a bunch of different type of um, Kubra imprints you can get as well. Uh, Blizzy here, his imp he is a um, Suknaya or whatever you call it, Kubra. He basically is an attack dog that will go and pin down capture targets for you, really useful. This type here, I forget what the type they're called, but um, Gazelle here, she is a type of Kubra that goes digging for you and will actually dig up loot from the floor so that you can get energy and stuff. Looty here is, um, well, he's called Looty because that's exactly what he does. He is, um, I think, a Huras. I'm remembering only some of the names, I know, sorry, but he is basically the type that will, as you can see there from the um, picture, he'll get stuff and bring it to you with his mouth, basically like a doll. He'll play fetch with items on the floor and bring them to you, like mods and stuff, which is great if you don't have a loot detector on your pet or sentinel, well, it wouldn't be sentinel because you're using a pet in this case, and they can go and bring the items to you. Then the, um, I think the other types of Kubrows are, um, one of them allows you to go stealth, and I'm pretty sure it's this type, I'm not, um, not exactly certain, but, um, yeah, in fact, I don't know why I was looking through the genetic imprints, I can basically go to the codex and show you there. You're right here in companions. So, in fact, yeah, you, the, oh, so you can actually see all the names here, so... Soon Nika, um, Huras, Raksa, Sasha, and Chessa. It's kind of funny because the Chess is the one that, um, oh, actually disarm adversaries as well, so it has the, like, Loki radio disarm effect. So it's called Chessa and it, um, kind of chases down items, which I kind of like. It's a kind of a pun in the name. Yeah, so that's pretty much it when it comes to what people generally want for, um, imprints. And generally what you want to get and what you want to sell them. Uh, generally what I've had happen recently is um, some uh, generally what you, a really high amount of platinum I once was uh, given was uh, I think uh, 60 platinum for two imprints. Which in my opinion is a great price. Like 30 platinum for each imprint. That's in my opinion time well invested for what you get. Like for how long it takes to get it. And uh, for the uh, but for the helmet charger though you can't actually um, get imprints of it and uh, trade them with other players. You just only get it how it is, and then you just have to deal with it, and either consign it if you don't want it, or um, keep it. And one last thing, keep in mind, which I'm actually going to do now to show you how it works, because, well, I do want to actually get a new pet for the imprint, so sorry, Violet, I'm going to give you off to the Lotus. And yes, I am sure I want to consign this pet. I don't want it, it, it just a whole, whole heap of them. Yeah, so as you can... Uh, See, well, it might be a little bit difficult to see because I had a um, huge amount of um, money here. But when you are consigning a pet, it will actually take money off you. You will not get the money listed. It will actually cost that much money to consign the pet because you're basically, I don't know, paying Lotus to take care of it with DNA stabilizers and everything. So yeah, that is um, pretty much it for my guide on how to make platinum. If you're not sure what anything's worth, just look up either, I think, the Warframe iNexus, or it's called something like that, and Warframe.market, which are two trading sites, and also just generally try and look up recent Reddit posts and stuff, and just try and type in Google, what is the price of insert Warframe item here, for example, uh, Ballistica Prime price, Warframe, and it will generally come up with a few links, just try and click on a few of those. Make sure it's of course the right links like the Warframe Wiki, the Warframe Nexus and that kind of stuff on Reddit, not some kind of super shady link or you could get a virus. And generally just base your prices off that and ask people in trade chat sometimes for a price check and if you no one answers you in trade chat, maybe ask region chat, chat because they are okay with you asking for price checks there, just don't try and sell your stuff in there because even the bot will tell you to go to trade chat. Yeah, so that pretty much covers it on my video on how to make some basic platinum. I hope we wish I would like wish you luck on your journeys and I may cover some more advanced ways to get platinum in the future. And of course don't forget to check out the video link in the description I will link for um how to actually getting getting um genetic codes and Kubra eggs. Yeah, because um, I'm not gonna record a second time like I said before, no point. So yeah, um bye and thanks for watching.